morning. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. You can be seated this morning. Thanks, Pastor Joe. Wonderful. Hey, wasn't that great news about Real Heart Project? How good is that? 25 decisions for Jesus. Hey, everybody was a part of that. If you gave, if you prayed, if you served, uh, that is incredible. But that, as Pastor Nick just said, that's how we transform cities. That's a part of transforming cities. And I just love what God has done. But 25 decisions is only the beginning. And, uh, you know, I just love that we're back in schools again, back fully in our university again as well, and uh, we can keep reaching out to people, amen? This is a heartbeat of our church. And uh, so welcome everyone joining us online today. Great to have you with us today. Make sure you're active in the chat as well, saying hello to each other, which is really cool. And we're going to continue uh, our, our series or s- launch into our series called We Are Empower. Uh, but before we do, um, as, as Harrison said before, it's, it's Valentine's Day today. So, I mean, who, put up your hand if you're a man you forgot. Like, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, my hand's up. Like, it's like, you know, uh, I knew it was coming and I, I knew it was happening. But uh, I, for Kate and I, we, um, we actually uh, have our anniversary at the end of January. So Valentine's Day isn't come, something huge for us. Like, we kind of like... we say happy Valentine's Day or something like that, but we kind of, you know, uh, have gotten used to how we do this together, and uh, our anniversary is the big thing, and uh, this year, Kate came to me and said, thank you for my gift, and I'm like, really? What, yeah, what gift? Yeah, she said, no, thank you for my gift. She said, I just bought this amazing jacket online. Thank you so much for getting that for me. It was incredible. I said, can, can I at least see it? Show me a picture of this amazing gift that I've given you. It's amazing. So she shows me this picture. It's incredible. But, uh, you know, I, I just love, that's a great way to get a gift for someone. I mean, you know, I'm not getting off the hook all the time like that. You know, not all the time. I said, but it, this year I got off the hook because she got the jacket she wanted, which is cool. And uh, so we are going to dive into um, our, our We Are Empower series. And uh, something we had at Vision Sunday last week uh, was really just sharing the heartbeat of the church. And uh, our main vision is to influence people to Jesus and transform cities for the kingdom of God. And uh, that's, that's what we're about as a church and as churches together. And something that we brought out last week was our four statements of mission. And our four statements of mission were taken from a scripture that God gave me 12 years ago that we were going to build uh, Empower Church upon. And uh, it's out of Luke 4, 18 and 19, and it says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blinded, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I love that scripture. And uh, our our four statements of mission are taken from the main points out of the Scripture, and that is to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And uh, over these next three Sundays, we're actually going to dive into these four mission statements. And today, we're we're talking about knowing God, to know God. And as it says in the line, preach the gospel to the poor. How many know that God... And his heart is to, he loves us so much. And God, out of his love, has gone to infinite lengths so that we could come into relationship with him. How many know he doesn't have to do any more than what he has already done by sending Jesus, his only son, to be the sacrifice for our sins, to die brutally at a Roman cross, to shed his blood for us, to rise again three days later so that we could have salvation and we could know God for ourselves. I love that we live in a a time after the New Testament has kicked in. We live in a time of grace. We live in a time where we can know God for ourselves and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Who is thankful for that today? That is amazing. I'm glad I was born in a New Testament time rather than an Old Testament time. I mean, I think it was great. It's a great part of, of our history, but I'm glad I was born now. And, uh, and I love the fact that God's heart is to have relationship with us, to know God. Now, when we say know God in our statement of mission, that is twofold. One part of that is to know God for ourselves, to go in a deepening, growing relationship with God. How many know you never stop discovering who God is? 
You never stop growing in your relationship with God. Now, the only thing that's going to stop that is our own decisions, isn't it? Is our own choice to pull back if we choose to. But, but for all of us, we can take steps and we can go deeper every single day, week upon week, year upon year. We can grow in our knowledge of God and our knowing of God. See, it's not just about knowing about God, but it's knowing God. I think we need to do both. I think we need to know more about God, but I also believe that we've got to know God for ourselves. Greater theology always leads to greater worship, and it should. It should. And, uh, and the, the, the next part about that is to help others know God. Help others know God. Help others go on that journey. If Jesus was sent to be the ultimate sacrifice for all of humanity, we now are a part of that mission. We now are a part of the story that God is playing out of helping others connect to Jesus Christ. How I many know our world is broken? Our world is hurting. Our world needs Jesus. Our neighbours around us need Jesus. Our, our friends that we work with need Jesus. Our people that we go to school with, that go to uni with, they need Jesus. Our world needs Jesus. And you and I, we are a part of bringing the gospel and bringing Christ to our world. So when we say no God, we mean no God for ourselves and help others know God. So we're all clear on that, aren't we? About who we, what we're about here with that. Ephesians 1, 15 to 17 says this. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. So you might grow in your knowledge of God. How many know that growth, it, it speaks of a journey? It speaks of steps along the way. That it, it doesn't just happen straight away, but we, we enter at salvation a journey of growing in our knowledge of God, of understanding God's nature, of understanding how He works and how He wants to work with us, of knowing Him through His Word, of knowing Him through prayer, of knowing Him through worship and knowing how you work with God during the day as well. We are all on this journey. And I encourage us today that as, as we dive into this journey, it is important to know that we never stop growing. Even if you've been a, a Christian for 30 years now, maybe 40 years, maybe 50 years you've been a Christian, that is awesome. But I want you to know this, is that you will never stop growing. You'll never stop taking those next steps in your relationship with God because He is discoverable and he can, you can always go deeper in your relationship with God. So there's encouragement for someone who's been saved maybe for a few months to someone who's been saved for 50 years. We're all still on the journey. We're all still growing in knowing our God. I love this, this um, different translation about Ephesians 1.17. And it says this, to know Him through your deepening intimacy with Him. To know Him through your deepening intimacy with Him. There's something powerful about just going deeper in that relationship with God. Every single day, making choices in our lives that says, God, I'm gonna pray today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read your word today. I'm gonna connect with you today, Jesus. I'm gonna allow my life to take another step in going deeper with you. See, I, I love the fact that even like a marriage, anyone who's married here today, if you're gonna build your relationship with your spouse, you gotta spend time together. You gotta to do life together. You can't just be like living together, but you need to be able to do life together to speak into each other's world and to build a relationship. It's the same with God. We need to build our relationship with God. We've gotta take steps every single day. And uh, I wanna encourage you today, even if prayer's been hard, just take a step. Just take a step to God. Take a step, get, get someone to help you. Grab the prayer book that we give out uh, every year and we've got the, so many more of them there to give out at our Connect Station to help you how to pray. We just wanna give you resources so you can be helped on this journey of knowing God for yourself. And we can go on this journey together. But I love how Paul, Paul always in his, in, in his epistles, always brings out this, this part 
with the church about how do we grow in that relationship with God. He said this here, I pray for you that you're growing and deepening in your intimacy with God. And, and something that Paul throughout all these epistles is always encouraging the church and saying, hey, how are you growing in your vertical relationship with God? Not only that, he says, how are you growing in your horizontal relationship with others? He says things like love one another, serve each other, forgive one another, bear with one another. All those things are coming through the epistles and we see that coming out because God is always wanting to grow our relationship with Him and He wants that to affect our relationship with others as well. So knowing God is always going to affect the relationships around us, going deeper in that relationship. And God calls us to that place. Hey, we should never be too busy to take another step to God. If we give up time in our life to take another step closer to God, you're never going to lose out with that. You're never going to miss out on something. You're only going to gain more because God is discoverable. And we don't want to come to God out of a duty. We don't want to come to God out of a, oh, I've got to, I have to pray, have to read the Bible, I have to do this stuff, I have to build my relationship with God. Hey, nothing ever lasts when it's a have to. But what lasts is when it's done out of devotion, when it's done out of love, when it's done out out of a heart that says, God, I'm coming closer to you. As James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and He will draw what? Near to you. See, this whole story of the gospel is actually about relationship. That's what it's about. It's about relationship. God wants to restore our relationship with Him and He wants to restore our relationship with each other. That is the power of the gospel because only He can. And see, when we allow that to grip our hearts, we can go deeper into that relationship with God. We can take further steps of growing in our intimacy with God. You know, over 18 months ago, we had an encounter night. We had one a few weeks ago here at church. It was amazing. It was a great night. God really moved. But in July the 14th, 2019, we had an encounter night here. And it was so powerful that night that at the end, there was about 30 of us. You know, the service was over. People had gone home. There was 30 people that stayed back in complete silence. As the presence of God was so strong. That God was speaking to people. He was showing people visions. He was just just working in people's lives. And it was like, it would have gone for about half an hour after the service finished. It was like silence. And I remember God, He spoke to me and He showed me this picture. He showed me a vision really of, of, of I saw this, this setting, like this Jewish setting of a dinner setting. And it wasn't like the dinner table that we have, but it was like a Jewish setting. It was all low to the ground. There were cushions everywhere, all around this low table to the ground. And it was full of food. It was full of food. And then I saw Jesus sitting there at this, at this table. And he looked up at me, just smiling. Looked up at me, he goes, come and sit with me. Come and sit with me. And he, and, and he kept saying this over and over again. Come and sup with me. And he said this word. He said, come fellowship with me. Come fellowship with me. Come and sit with me. And I remember sitting down. And I felt like I was 10 years old again. I was with Jesus. And I'm and it, was just, it was so weird. I was just sitting there at this moment. It's like, this presence of God is there. And I, I, we were laughing together. And we were in this moment of fellowship with God. And he said, let's take communion together. Let's do communion. So we broke bread and, and we took communion together. And we ate together. He said this as, a, as it finished up. This is only about a minute or two. I had this, I had this picture. And uh, he said at the end, he said, Paul, where there's greater fellowship, it will lead to greater freedom. Fellowship to freedom. Fellowship to freedom, fellowship to freedom. And I had to take stock in that over the next few weeks because I just dug into God with that. I started reading Scripture. I said, God, you got to help me understand what that means. But what he, what he meant out of that statement, fellowship to freedom, is this. The more we grow in our fellowship with God and our deepening relationship with God, the less our temptations have a hold on our lives. The less sin has grip on our lives. The more we go deeper, the less sin has a hold. And so we've got to understand we cannot break the hold of sin on our own strength. It is actually going deeper with God. That's what does it. That's the journey of sanctification with God through the Holy Spirit. Of the more I go deeper and say yes, the more I'm obedient to God and what He's asking me to do and He's wanting to do through my life is the greater I can come into fellowship with God, but it breaks the old off my life. It cuts off the old from fellowship 
to freedom. And see, God wants us to go deeper. See, I knew I had that, that picture back then because I believe it's very important right now. It's important for 2021. God wants to take us deeper. God wants to take us into a greater growing relationship with Him. And see, if we keep our relationship with God on this salvation surfacey level, then sometimes we'll miss what God's trying to say. Sometimes we'll miss what God's trying to do in a moment because we kept our relationship with Him so surfacey. The only way we can truly understand God and understand His nature is we actually have to be the one that, that takes the step of vulnerability. We actually have to be the one that goes deeper in that relationship with Him so that our relationship and our strength around our lives and our picture of God can get stronger. God wants to strengthen us. And that strength comes through deepening our relationship with God. How are we going today? If God's wanting us to go deeper, and that's been a word for this year as well, then I encourage you, take the steps. Take the steps. If, if prayer's been a struggle, then get around people that know how to pray. Pray with your people at your life group as well. If, if word of God's been a struggle, then find better ways to be able to do it. Some, one way that I love to do it is I actually press play on my YouVersion Bible app, and it, it speaks it to me. I love that. I love that. I read through it as it's speaking to me as well. There's so many different ways. We live with such great technology, but that technology is there so we can grow our relationship, with, our relationship with God in a deeper way. What do we need to do? How do we need to take our next step to go deeper? If you're online today, what do you need to do? What does it look like for your life to go deeper in our knowledge of God and our knowing of God as well? From fellowship grow, goes to freedom, amen? The second thing is influence others to know God. Colossians 1, 28 to 29 says this, Christ is our message. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of truth. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with a tireless intensity, with His power flowing through me to present to every believer the revelation of being His perfect one in Jesus Christ. I love how Paul starts this scripture and he says this, he says, Christ is the message. Christ is the message. If we're gonna sum everything up today, Christ is the message. Can I take this a little bit more personal right now? Christ is my message. Christ is my message. Christ is your message today. If you're online, Christ is your message. He is the message. I know we're busy. I know we've got a lot on. I know there's targets to meet. There's deadlines to meet. There's all sorts of stuff going on in our work. I know we've got family stuff going on. We've got things going on in our lives and we can all get busy and we can all have a lot going on and the wheel is turning at a million miles an hour. But I wanna tell you today, let's never lose sight of the fact that Christ is the message. He is the message. He is the one that we're bringing to the world every single day. When you go to work, Christ is the message. When you go to your local gym, Christ is the message. When you go to your favourite coffee shop and you know the people that work there and you know those same old patrons that are there every morning, Christ is the message. When you're dropping your kids off at school or picking them up at the end of the day, when you're taking them to their sporting uh, group of an afternoon, Christ is the message. And I wanna encourage us today Let's let Him be our message every single day because knowing God and going deeper in our relationship with God is one part of it. The other part is we're helping others take their step to go deeper in their relationship with God as well. I want us all to understand that the journey of discipleship and growth, it doesn't start at salvation. It starts when people don't even believe in God. It starts even if they're an atheist right now or even if they believe in something else entirely. Well, it starts at negative 10. But I wanna tell you, we're going on a journey of development and growth when you can help someone else around you go from negative 10 to negative nine. They're that much more closer to salvation. They're that much more closer to taking another step toward Jesus because Christ is the message. And we wanna be aware in our lives of how we're helping other people take their steps toward Jesus today. I wanna to tell you right now, the closer we get to God, the more you're gonna understand that His heart beats for lost people. God's heart beats for us. 
God hearts be- God, God's heart, it beats for lost people. It really does. And the more we go deeper with Him, the more we're going to understand and become aware of the plight of people around us. The more we're going to become aware of what's going on in our family, in our relatives, in our, in our, in our greater world, in our workplaces and everywhere around us. We're going to be able to, it's almost like your eyes open up to see what's going on in other people's lives. Because it's the heart of God to really beat for lost people. I love what it says in Timothy. 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 4 says this, this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Saviour who desires all people, everyone say all people, all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God desires all people. His heart is for every person to take their steps toward Jesus. God is longing for the lost. There's seven billion people on this planet And there are many of us that know Him and we are living as His children. But God is caught up also with His children that don't know Him. That don't know Him. And we're around them every day. We're around people that don't know Jesus all the time. See, what what God wants is He wants that burden that He feels for lost people to grip our heart as well. To grip us as well. So you might be thinking today, man, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not, I'm not gifted in that way. I'm not a preacher. I, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I wanna tell you today, God can move through any part of your life. He can move through the gifts that you carry on your life. He can move through your act of service. He can move through your generosity. He can move through your sitting and talking to your friend after work. He can move through anything in your life. If you just give Him room, if we just give Him access in our lives to be able to be aware of where people are at in our lives, even a little step, God can do a big thing in somebody else's life. I want you to know today is God is trying to get our attention so He can get the attention of someone else. He's trying to get our attention so that He can get the attention of somebody else, someone who's far from Him. God loves us. Oh man, He's given it all for us. But He also gave it all for everybody else in this world. And He's using us. He's using us to be His vessels that He flows through. Christ is the message. Christ is my message. I want you to say that right now. Christ is my message. Say it one more time. Christ is my message. He is my message every day. See, one thing about helping people know God and go on a journey to know Jesus is is it's not just a natural thing, even though there's natural steps that happen. It's actually a very spiritual thing. What we're doing is we're we're, we're helping someone go from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And there's a warfare that goes on spiritually for people's souls. The enemy doesn't wanna give up on them. He doesn't wanna let them go. So we do have to pray for them. We do have to fight in the spirit for those who are lost. We've got, we got relatives, we've got friends at work, we've got people around us that we are called to pray for. And that is one of the, the best things that we can start to do if we're thinking, how do I get switched on for people who are far from God? Just start praying for them. Start to believe God for them. And I wanna encourage you, our Pray First book, if you don't know how to pray for them, there's on page 50 to page 54, there are great prayers in here that you can just recite and can help you on the journey of praying for people that you know. There's prayers that break the devil's deception off people's lives so that God's revelation can get in. There's prayers that people can open up to His revelation of love and hope and understanding that God is real. There is prayers that other believers and Christians can come around those people so that they wouldn't be surprised that suddenly they're bumping into other Christians all the time. I don't know how many times I've had conversations with people that I am praying for that have said to me, you know what's funny, you know, as we might be talking about church or talking about stuff like that, they'll say to me, I keep bumping into people like you. I keep bumping into Christians. This guy at work, I work with, is a Christian. He keeps coming to talk to me all the time. Why is that? Why is that? You know, part of it is that that's the power of prayer. That's the power of praying over people and God creates opportunities around their lives where they can come come and take steps deeper and closer to Jesus Christ. See, it doesn't just, uh, the, the, the beginning point isn't just at salvation. The beginning point is helping people take their next steps. And you and I, we're a part of that. 
And it just starts with the people that are in our world right now. And not only is it praying for them, but it's also being aware of the moments. Being aware of the moments with the Holy Spirit. There are moments that go on around our lives every day. And when we get truly, really busy in our lives, sometimes we can get a little numb to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Who notices that? I've had that happen in my life too. And I know there's been moments where the Holy Spirit has impressed on my heart to do something for someone or speak to someone. And I've been so full that I've missed some moments. I've missed some moments. And God's got to me later and He said, you missed it. You missed that moment, Paul. And I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I repent. I missed that moment. And it's always an awareness. You can say sorry, but say, you know what, Lord, tomorrow I'm ready. I'm going to be aware. I'm not going to miss those moments. See, we have moments with our neighbours around us. We have moments when we're dropping our kids off at school. We have moments at the gym. We have moments everywhere in our lives, people we work with. It's just recognising when the Holy Spirit is impressing upon us to take that step towards that person. And it's not always going to be you preach the entire gospel from start to finish. I'm not saying you're going to do that. It might be the simplicity of showing Jesus before you ever get to share about Him. But we've got to be aware of the moments, the moments that are there all the time. And we should never get too busy that we miss those Holy Spirit moments. They're there all the time. And maybe it's not like every single day and every moment, but man, when they do happen, you know it. You know it. And you know, God, okay, what do I do? How do I work with this, Lord? How do I take the step here? Sometimes it's just a step of faith and then God kicks in and He helps you with it. Sometimes it's just a conversation. Sometimes maybe someone is, is, is dealing with something at work. They may be going through a divorce at home and they're hurting right now and they just need someone to sit with them and talk with them. I mean, people are really dealing with real stuff. I know that there's people in this congregation right now that are dealing with real stuff in your lives right now. That's why we need that deepening relationship with God. That's why we need fellowship with each other. And, and not only that, but even in the midst of sometimes us dealing with stuff in our own life, God can still use us to help somebody else. God can still move through our lives. It's not like He stops moving through our lives. God is always moving in us and through us at the same time. At the same time. Because God wants to reach those around us that are far from Him. God's heart beats for lost people. It beats for us, but it beats for those that are far from Him. And He wants to use us daily in our lives to help people take that next step toward Him. Christ is the message. Christ is the message. And I want to encourage us today, what is your next step today? If you're online today, what's what's your next step? What's our next step of growing our relationship with God ourselves? What's our next step of being aware of people that are far from God around us? Maybe it's to start praying for them. Maybe that that will stir an awareness in our hearts. In fact, I think that's probably the best place you can start because once you start praying, you start getting switched on to the moments in the Holy Spirit. What are our next steps? And I encourage us with that today. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank You today. That God, first of all, I pray for Your grace. Let your grace pour out upon us as your people right now. Lord, I pray for your grace to take steps deeper in our relationship with you. Lord, I know that you are discoverable. Lord, I know that we can deepen our relationship with you. But Lord, I also know that, man, life is full. There's so much on God in our lives sometimes. But God, help us not to get so busy that we forget about you. And God, help us to take steps to grow our relationship with you daily in our lives. And Lord, I just thank You in the simplest way. God, help us to develop our prayer life. Help us to get the Word of God into our lives, to take those simple steps in our lives to grow our relationship with You. But God, I pray for Your grace on us, God, to be praying for people that are far from God around us. Lord God, to be switched on to the moments in our lives where we can be an answer in a moment to someone else that needs to take their step toward You. And Lord, I thank You. Lord, help us to be aware of that Holy Spirit Help us to be switched onto that even tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Lord God, throughout our lives, we can take steps in these areas of our lives. I thank You for that today. 
And God, we are all a part of this mission to know God and to help others know God as well. In Jesus' name. Hey, church, I'd love if we can stand to our feet right now. I just want to sing through this Lord's Send Revival. Can we do that? Is that great? Let's just sing this together. And while we sing this, I want you to picture, I want you to picture those around you that are far from God. I want you to sing this like a prayer for them right now. Let's sing this together. Lord send revival. Lord send it now. Move in your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now with power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord send revival. Lord, I just thank you right now. Lord, we picture those people in our lives. We picture each and every one of them, those we work with, our relatives, family members. We may be living with them right now. God, I just pray for them. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you reveal your reality to them. You'll show them your love. You'll show them what you've done at the cross and what you've done to really bring salvation to their lives. And Lord, I just thank you. Show them that you want to have a relationship with them. And I pray, Jesus, that God, every single person that's in our lives right now that we're calling deeper, I pray that they'll come closer. I pray that 2021 will be that year that they will be saved. The year they will be saved. And God, we believe for that. And I claim that in the Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask right now if there's anyone here in this congregation today or maybe online that doesn't know Jesus as eyes are closed across this auditorium I want to ask if you don't know Jesus for yourself Jesus loves you he has a plan for your life a purpose for your life and life is so much better when it's done with God than without him God is real he loves you and God wants to do this journey of life with you it's much better with God And I want to encourage you today, one of the greatest things we can do to accept Jesus into your life, as it says in Romans, it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pray a simple prayer together to accept Jesus into your life. So if you are here today and you have never said yes to Jesus, I want you right now, just an acknowledgement in this moment to raise your hand, lift your hand up high to say, you know what, I need Jesus. I want to pray this prayer. I want to pray this prayer again today, if that's you. Maybe you're here today and you want to make a recommitment to Jesus because you know you're far from God in your life right now and you want to come back to Jesus today. Just lift up your hand. Raise it high to say, I need Jesus today. I, I want to come back to Jesus today, if that's you. Just lift it high today, if that's you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're going to pray this prayer together for people online today as well. So why don't you repeat these lines after me as we pray. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and my past. I accept you today as my Savior and my Lord from this day forward. I begin a journey with you, Jesus. I am born again into your kingdom. Amen.
Amen. Awesome. Can we just put our hands together and honour anyone who may have said that prayer for the first time? If you're online today and you said that prayer for the first time today as well, bless your heaps, church. Thanks, Pastor. Awesome. Can we thank Pastor Paul for that amazing word this morning? Great word. Come on, as a church of power, we're here to know God and let others know about Him too. Hey, if you didn't happen to pray that prayer for the first time, or maybe a recommit, recommitment, and you know you made that with inside your heart, anyone online as well, we encourage you, uh, go to our Connect card. You can find that online and you can see that right now. And uh, would you just fill that out and uh, just let us know, because we actually want to help you on the journey of living for Jesus. It's not just one time decision, it's a life done with Jesus now. And uh, we want to help you out with that. But uh, we've been blessed this morning, church. It's been a great morning. We're praying for you. Pray you have a blessed week. In the cafe, after the service, we have Filipino fried noodles. Uh, So get into it. It It's going to be a great lunch. Have an amazing week. And uh, we will see you next week. We're going to go out praising God together.